Hi, I'm Paul Nadeau. I spent 31 years on the police department. 15 of those years were spent as a hostage negotiator. Today we'll be looking at hostage negotiations in television and film. This clip is from the television series, Mindhunter. Put the gun down, step away from Miss Kurtwell. You're gonna shoot me? If you do not abide by our terms. Mr. Miller. No, thank you. Hey, Cody. My name is Holden. I'd like to help you. The word negotiation itself implies conversation. When you have somebody telling you, come on out or we're coming in to get you, there's no opportunity to actually be heard. And when a person is in crisis, they want to be understood, they want to be validated, whatever it is. Tell me what's going on. I had to talk to my wife. All right. The only one. I understand. For the moment, is there anything else we can get you? To bring a loved one to the scene that they may be angry with or that they may want as a witness to their suicide is the wrong thing to do. We cannot bring people, put their lives at risk, their mental wellness at risk. Today, we have mental health specialists who accompany hostage negotiators to talk to these type of cases and to consult the hostage negotiator on the scene. But way back when, we didn't. In this situation, the FBI officer did everything right. He was textbook. Maybe I can help. There's nothing more that he could have done. That final decision was made by one person, one person only, and that was the hostage taker. This show really showcases the development and the strides that we've come to take in both criminal profiling and hostage negotiations. This scene is from the television series, Waco. Oh, I'm thinking a week, a week or so. Are you telling me that once you have reduced your version of the Seven Seals to written form that you and all your people are coming out of there? I have no reason to draw this out any longer, Gary. Please answer the question definitively. Are you coming out as soon as you're done? This series, Waco, is actually based on actual events. In fact, Gary's a friend of mine, and we've had several conversations about negotiations and about this particular situation. The television program is not an accurate account of what happened. What we know and what Gary has talked about is that he was being very successful talking to David Koresh and to gaining his cooperation, but it was taking a number of days. Definitively, are you coming out as soon as you're done? Gary. I am going to fulfill my commitment to God. Now, if you would allow me to show you what's been pre-written by the prophets, you'll have a way better understanding of what's going on in here. You don't negotiate a crisis like that in 24 hours or 48 hours. Brainwashing takes a long time to undo. When you have a charismatic leader, who manages to get people attracted to him to believe that he is a savior. Not only do you have to negotiate with the leader of a cult like this, you also have to try to get through to his followers to give them a choice to come out whenever they wish and choose. Okay, David, well, I'm gonna let you get to work because frankly, I am eagerly awaiting that manuscript. Well, I tell you what, it's gonna blow your socks off, Gary. After Gary was removed, the authorities decided to bring tanks in, loud music, and to really blast um, the sleep and deprive the people of their basic human rights in hopes that that would get them to give it all up. And it had the reverse effect, and hopefully we'll never repeat anything like that again. This scene is from the movie Breaking. Why you please? I like to help people. It looks like you can use some help today. Yeah, you the chief. That was good, man. Tell me, Brian, what can I do for you today? Is it okay if I call you Brian? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, sir, I know you know why I'm here. And I just simply want my money back. That's all. From the VA, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, I've had some problems with veteran affairs myself. We see a hostage negotiator come into the picture and start to make a connection with this man. And he speaks to him in a tone of voice that is not confrontational. It's that attitude, how can I help? What is it that you're going through? Because it's not all about the situation. Oftentimes it's about personal revelations. Hey, what branch of service you in? Marine. Simplify, sir. Where did you train? I'm a West Coaster. 
Even a casual conversation about what they did when they were deployed is very comforting because it establishes that connection between people. And I think that, that was brilliantly played. And based on a true story, I think it's amazing. The scene we're about to see is from the movie Speed. This day has been real disappointing, I don't mind saying. Why, because you didn't get to kill everyone? There will come a time, boy, when you'll wish you never met me. Mr. I'm already there. Keanu Reeves, God love him, everybody loves him. He's playing the part of a tactical officer. They're not trained to be complete hostage negotiators. His focus is on bringing this guy down. We didn't see Keanu Reeves being calm or trying to negotiate anything. We saw him focused on an outcome and not stopping at anything to get to that outcome. Shoot the hostage. Say goodbye, Harry. In a situation where a hostage is taken and there's fresh pursuit, there's so much that can go wrong. You know, I, I would have a hard time really imagining I was there face to face with the hostage taker and have to shoot the hostage. I just have a hard time wrapping my head around it, but I can't rule it out. This scene is from the movie Metro. Okay, Earl. All right, I'm stopping. All right, turn around. I don't carry a weapon, Earl. I'm a negotiator. I have no gun, see? Keep your hands up! What's in the hand, man? What's in the bag? These are donuts, Earl. Hostage negotiations are not conducted, generally speaking, face to face. We don't put ourselves in a situation like that. The hostage negotiator wants to go home, too. It's Hollywood. Hey, uh, Earl, I gotta take Harold out of here. He's bleeding pretty bad. Now, you can shoot me if you want, but the next negotiator is gonna tell you the same thing. Where does that come from? It's not something that any negotiator would be using. Hey, you can shoot me if you want. Well, we already saw that this is an unstable individual, possibly on drugs. If that offer was made, hey, you can shoot me if you want, it wouldn't surprise me if the guy turned around and shot him. All right. Manual automatic. Automatic! We gotta talk about that shot. I don't know of too many shooters who can actually do that. It's cowboy and it's risky to the point where anybody could die. When we are negotiating with mentally ill people and we get the sense that nothing that we are saying is landing on their ears, then our job as negotiators is to make that determination and say, if you don't send in the SWAT within the next 30 seconds, people are going to die. We don't make the final call. The hostage negotiators, they answer to an incident commander who gives the final say as to whether or not to go. And that does happen. This scene is from the movie Dog Day Afternoon. Hey, don't fire! Don't fire! What are you don't doing? Don't fire, don't fire, hold Don't touch him! Hold him! He's one of the hostages! Get away from him! He's one of the hostages! Get away from him! He has no control over the officers, and it's because there was no leadership and no training at the time to control a situation like this. Whenever an incident like this or a big incident would happen, every copper in a cruiser would want to be a part of it, be part of this big story. It's probably the biggest one they've seen all month. In any kind of crisis situation, you want to contain and then negotiate. Attica! 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 The reason you want to set up perimeters is not only to keep the public at a safe distance, but also to control what goes on on the inside. It's a tremendous movie. It's based on actual events. This situation and a few other situations prompted the New York Police Department to go to the FBI and say, there's got to be a better way. This is what really gave birth to the modern way of hostage negotiations. It gives us an insight into how far we've come. This scene is from Inside Man. Which way is more? All the trains that pass through Grand Central Station in a year, or the trees cut down to print all U.S. currency in circulation? It's a trick question. What the hell is that? Playing games now? It's the trains. U.S. money isn't printed on paper at all. It's cut. Yeah, yeah I heard that's, that. that's right. Okay. So no trees were cut down. Are you sure? Yeah. This showcases the fact that there's a team working together. We have the primary hostage negotiator doing the negotiations and everyone else in the background doing their work. 
They're gathering intelligence. They're evaluating everything that's being said. When you have too many people in a room like that, there's a possibility that people will start talking about something that's other than what's really at stake here. I would like fewer people in a room like that. I promise you, God is my witness. I'm working on it as hard as I can. It's just gonna take a few more hours. Why should I give you any more time? When we tell the hostage taker, I need more time, there's a number of reasons why we do that. More time means the level of crisis could come down. It could also allow people to do their jobs. Detectives are pounding the pavement, knocking on doors, trying to find out who this person is, what their motivation was. We've got the tactical team who are out there looking for the best locations in which they can set up. The one thing that I take objection to... What do you want me to say? But my plane is ready. I promise you, God is my witness. I'm working on it as hard as I can. We don't do that. We don't lie. We don't promise a plane. We don't promise drugs or, or booze or, or whatever it is. What happens later on when the realization by the hostage takers that they're not getting what they asked for? Then the level of jeopardy rises substantially. This next clip is from the movie Hostage. Oh, no, Joe, nobody wants to hear gunshots in there scare us all out here. Now look, I've been trying to help you all day, all right? You want me to help you, you gotta help me. You do not know what it's like. You do not know what I've been through. You don't know what I'm going through, man. I think I got the balls. I have never negotiated from a pile of duffel bags, lying down, combing my beard. What we're hearing is a very nonchalant, dismissive kind of surf boy. And on the other end of the line, we have somebody who's so agitated, they're about to explode. Bruce Willis is doing nothing that would calm the situation down. He doesn't recognize the homicidal situation that he's got on his hands. I know you got the balls, Joe. No, you don't think I'm gonna do it. You can do whatever you want. That's so tired, man. I know you're tired, Joe. The rest of his team recognize that they've only got a short window in which they can save lives. I would not want that negotiator on my scene. And in fact, somebody should have pulled him off hours ago. There should have been an incident commander saying, I've heard enough. There's a 100% chance this ain't going well. You're out for now. The tactical team might take their shot, would likely take their shot to take the hostage taker out of the equation. This scene is from the television series, Justified. You know what juke cake is, Shooter? Well, I'm guessing it's unpleasant. It's when one of these bitches takes your meal and they dump it all in the blender, blend it together. Oh, hell yeah, I pretend like it's fried chicken from Princess Hot in Nashville, and I enjoy every finger licking mouthful. I think Raylan did an amazing job. We see that this guy is probably starving for that kind of conversation. He's been locked up, he's been mistreated. He's a desperate man because he knows he's going back. There's nothing for him in this. He doesn't care what's going to happen to him. And what he needs is a voice of reasoning, somebody who can actually talk to him. Is that why you're doing this? Screw with guys who screw with you. When you actually see somebody and you empathize with their situation, then they recognize that you may actually care about them. Now, here we go. Check this out, Wallace. What do we got? 24 pieces extra spicy. 24 pieces extra spicy. I think it was top notch to get the chicken. Brilliant. If I was in an interrogation room, I would offer to have that meal brought in, but not only for the person I was interrogating, but also for me. And it, it builds that trust and that rapport in people. They just feel like they've been listened to, they've been heard, and they say, you know what, I, I had enough of this. You're a pretty good guy. I'm gonna give myself up to you. Here's my weapon, I'm coming out. It happens more frequently than you could imagine. If we can take the emotion out of the equation and bring logic back into it, then we are more likely to be successful in any negotiation. One of the principles that I love, that I've carried into my negotiations, is seek first to understand, and then to be understood. It will work marvels in sales, in business transactions, your significant other, your children, whoever it is. And I believe that if we all used those principles, this world would be a much better place. Thanks for watching.